Uh, take that nasty thing off my desktop. Mm -hmm. It'll happen again. Meanwhile, let's just take a moment and see if we can align ourselves. We'll do a little bow in. So let's just do some little heaven and earth breathings. Dip down, draw the energy up from the earth, extend out, sending it out to people who are struggling on the planet. Drawing from the earth, reaching for the sky and radiating positive energy out. And one more. And then building energy as we gather and let it build in the hara and then release it. Focusing into the hara, sense the strength, releasing. And then let's begin to turn from there. And since we're talking about extension, see if we can just enjoy the feeling of key flowing out through our arms and fingertips. And as we do it, let's think about our friends, particularly over in that area of conflict and sending love and blessings and light to them. Drawing from the earth, from the sky. Okay, let's stop for a moment. Just stand in it. And then because we're gonna talk about extension, let's just do the triangle shape, because that really has a feeling of extending way out. And together and back, together and back. So as we do this, See if you can find a point and extend way out. Focusing the point of the triangle. Imagining our backs are open and we can invite Aiki spirit to flow through us. Extend through our arms and fingers. Way out. Imagining our arms are hollow. Try to feel with the extension, what's the sensation of extension? Maybe it's a visual, like light or liquid. Feel more and hold. And then let's just stand in it for a moment. See if we can just extend sense the extension continuing to go out to a point, our backs are open. Part of all that, nice. So I just wanted to um, ask some questions and then I thought we could um, discuss. Uh, I'm gonna do the first two. Where does extension come from and how do we develop extension? I got a bunch of them, but I'm gonna start with two. two. Or we can even do the first one. Where does extension come from? I imagine extension as, can you hear me? Yes, yes. As, um, well, today, I see these, lines of energy around the the earth i suppose and the universe like different lines of energy and extension as kind of picking up and riding that so um yeah that's how i see it so i it comes from those energetic forces or so nice okay I like it. Great. Your thoughts on where does extension come from? 
Well, what first came to mind was the extensor muscles, right? Rather than contracting, because you've been working on that in class quite a bit and, and, and showing that, and I did it in a seminar recently too, just showing that when you like contract like this, you're releasing sort of uh, cortisol, the stress hormone, right? And you're sort of like shrinking down your thinking. And then when you use the extensor muscles, you're actually changing your brain chemistry. And through that, you're changing up how you perceive the world, right? And then to Kimberly's point, it's like, I feel like in order to then be able to see that bigger picture of those other energetic lines that could be more helpful in your life that, that, that are not the flow, let's say that energy force that's all around us all the time. I think having sort of an antenna that is picking that could, it could pick up those signals could be useful. Nice. I like it too. So it really addresses um, the line that I've often used. You've heard me say it because the four principles from Kuich Dohe's key are um, weight under side, relax completely, um, key, extend your key, and, um, and keep one point. So extend your key is how it was translated. But when Jun Akiyama went back to Hongu and read the kanji, he said, it said, actually says key is extended, which um, extend your key kind of the way I first heard it implies I have to manufacture the key, like I have to do it. Whereas key is extended implies what both of you are referring to, like it's something that comes through us rather than something that we create. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that as a baseline because I think the language is really important of what it's pointing to. Um, not that I do it, but it's already there. Um, so I like that. And I think I agree with you. I think um, key is like life, the same way that light can become a laser. So life force when it's um, organized and focused and extended can become a powerful tool to either assert ourselves, speak our truth, or in Aikido to actually activate a, <clears throat> a technique to be able to function that way. So I agree, I, I see it as an organization, extension as an organization of, of life force. Second question, how do we develop extension? For me, it has a lot to do with imagination. Um, so I think it's interesting that when I think about extend your key, as opposed to key is extended, like extend your key comes from the front in a way. Like I think about doing it and it starts from here going forward. Mm -hmm. Whereas key is extended has to do with something that runs through me. So I think a lot more about my back. And so, how, so developing the extension, let's say, requires or relies on that, that visualization to, to, to feel it coming through behind as a, as a life force that, that comes out and behind, for instance, or it could extend up or sideways, but more frequently for me and maybe easily, more easily or naturally, it comes from behind and it's a line running this way. Nice. So that's an I like it. Great. Yes. The. Yeah, it's it's tough. I, I like the imagination part. I struggle with imagination, always have. It's more, I'm not as uh, creative as some of us are around us. And I definitely haven't done as many, as much uh, psychedelics as some. 
have to kind of like foster that ability, right? But, but also like, you know, using your words, Sensei, where it's like, well, what if, what if you could ride that wave? Like, how would you be in your body? Like asking those kinds of questions, like, okay, if there's this energetic wave around me that I can't really see, and I can't always really feel, right? Well, how could I pick up on it, right? And, and scientifically, it's there. You just, you, you can read all about it, right? There's tons of, there's more aliveness in this little, little bit of air around me than, you know, than I can imagine is in that, right? <laughs> the same within myself, right? Like there's all these microorganisms that are helping me to sort of try to live life in a way, right? To In order to build those chemicals or that chemical cocktail of happiness and feeling good and creativity and all that. I have to have this gut biome of creatures inside of me that are sort of helping and sort of doing their thing every day. And we all need to be in sync in a way. So I think in, in the practice that is like, well, how do you hold yourself and how do you show up in the world? And even if you don't feel like it, because I feel like feelings are temporary sort of moments in time that yes, they're valid in some ways, but they're also not valid if anybody has meditated for a while, because you might have some feel. I go through these experiences of having bad feelings and good feelings in meditation or itches and pain and things come up but then when it goes away I don't even remember what they were anymore right after a few breaths so yeah and I think it's a like that internal practice to keep striving for finding ways to practice getting the benefits out of life yes I, I fully agree so some research has pointed to the way we have different aspects of perception, kinesthetic, auditory, and visual, depending on who we are. I'm primarily kinesthetic and auditory and visual is my last. But I think one way to develop extension is to use all three, even if they're not that strong. So um, kinesthetic, it's like the sensation of extension. So um, when, I was in South Africa and we were working with underprivileged people. We were trying to connect them to their flow to articulate it. And we asked what it felt like to have what we call energy moving through them, the key. And some people said, one person said singing rainbows and the other said like um, warm honey. And some people said like water and some people said, like they came up with all kinds of um, different images of what it was like, the difference between pulling in and when something was flowing out. And so I think to, even if we're not primarily visual, which I'm not, I still uh, visualize sort of a beam of light. And then I'm sensate so that I can have the sensation almost as if something's coming through me. And then I can talk to myself. I can coach myself. You know, find that spot on that tree, imagine you're touching it, imagine it's coming from behind you through your arm and touching the tree. So to me, if we use all three, of course, we're going to pri primarily get more juice out of the one that we're the most oriented toward. Like if we're visually oriented, we're going to get a lot out of that. Or people who are... Um, kinesthetic are gonna get a bunch of that, but I really recommend using all three as a way to cultivate um, and, and a concentration, to concentrate it in a particular area rather than just sort of randomly out. It's like going out to that spot, going out to that place. It's coming from behind, as Kimberly pointed out, going out, that kind of thing. So I think, um, those are good ways. And then the sensation of the unbendable arm. Do you remember that? I think it's a lousy phrase. Um, energy arm would be a better phrase rather than unbendable. But the sensation of when somebody does this to your arm, you got it on, on their shoulder and then they can't bend your elbow and you're not fighting. Like that's always a big kind of body aha for people. 
if we give them that experience, people who, who kind of don't get the difference between doing it and it coming through. So those are thoughts on that. Fente. So when it comes to the learning types, I'm definitely visual, but I'm not visual where I can conceptualize something and see it like created out of thin air necessarily. Right. Like I can visual in a way that like if I watch somebody else do it, I can repeat that. So so how do you know your name is your name? Do you see it? Do you hear it or do you feel it? I think I hear that. Yeah, I, I think you are too. I mean, I think you're auditory and I also think you're sensate because you look down. So if you ask me how I know my name is Wendy, I'll look down because I can feel it's Wendy. My sister, who's an artist, a lot of painting and tonka painting, you ask her how she knows her name is Adele and she'll look up because she sees it. Mm -hmm. And then hear it. So I, I think, you know, you looked kind of to the side. This is a little NLP stuff. Um, so I think you have... You know, I think auditory is a strong one for you. It's why you can probably listen to books at speed where most people can't because you can really get a lot of information through auditory. Yeah, but I can't, like if somebody explains how to do something to me, I've lost them at step two. No, I, that's not what I mean. Yeah. What I mean is your own insight, almost you hear the words or you come up with the words from inside you, not listening to someone else, it's not about someone else telling you because I'm very auditory and I, somebody can tell me something and I don't follow right, it at right. all yeah my own but, probably my own words it, for sure that way but I, well, then how does the book when I'm listening to books how does that work because I'm listening to somebody else's but you, you're absorbing through your system when you're listening to someone give you directions, it's very different. And you and I are both very anti-authoritarian. So anyone giving any kind of directions, we're right. gonna put up a block um, just on principle. Like don't, don't tell me what to do. Even if, even if it's positive, there's gonna be resistance. Like go A to B to C, we're like, no. But if inside I, I hear Wendy go A to B to C, I'm like, yes. But I can't visualize A, B, and C either, though, in my own brain. Like, you know, when it comes to, like, learning a body, a movement. Yeah, but, but if you're, let, let's say if I said to you right now, okay, so give me three words that represent um, patience. Presence. Stillness and listening. So you you kind of heard those. They sort of came out of you. That's what I mean. You come up with information. It's like how you perceive the world and, and make sense of it is quite auditory. It's like mm -hmm. you can come up with those words. I've worked at that though. I, I still think you're you're quite auditory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I I agree. I'm not 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 disagreeing. It's just like yeah. there's a little bit around the the visual that I'm like because I really if I watch somebody do something then I it's repeatable for me, right? I and maybe but but I've also trained that through Aikido sitting, you know, it's a beautiful art in that way where we sit and we watch sensei do something with a student, right? And, so. And then you and then you have to emulate that. And then it's a different experience when you come up and you're the sensei's uke, and the sensei, you're using me as uke teaching the class. Then I'm going through what I felt, but that took longer, you know, to conceptualize and go, oh, there's a feeling here that I want to emulate now. So, so this woman, Donna, did an interesting thing. She took three groups of people and one group was auditory, one was visual and one was sensei. And she put them in three different rooms and she gave them each the same amount, exact same amount of tools, a rope, a ladder, or this, or that, um, a, 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 what you call a board that you write on. Um, and they had a task to build something. So it was really interesting because the visual people all went to the, what you call board, and started drawing things and they were talking to each other about it, what should we do? 
The auditory people didn't look at the board at all. They just sat down and started talking and the sensate people just went right to the objects and started working with them. They didn't talk much and they certainly didn't draw. Mm. So it was really interesting to see. Um, and they all came up with building whatever they needed to build, but their process was so different depending on how they were oriented. Right. So I definitely would be the start messing with the tools and like talking through it. Well, so, th so that's my premise is that yeah. you're um, auditory sensate. Kimberly, what are, you, what are your thoughts on where you s fall in those categories? Yeah, I feel pretty strongly all three, which is, I think, kind of annoying um, because I don't feel like I have um, something I can rely on. So I feel kind of deficient in all categories, if you will. <laughs> but, but if you, someone said, how do you know your name is your name? Do you see it? Do you hear it? Or do you feel it? What's the first? I looked down. So NLP would be towards hearing the, it, toward, feeling it. Sensation. Yeah, but I see it in my head also. So that's what I was going on. I was thinking, yeah, because when you said that, of course, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good at hearing directions like what Greg was saying. I like but maybe that's my also my um anti-authoritarian um tendency. <laughs> 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 but I wanted to point something out with regard to um extension and I love what Greg said about we now know um literally that we have all these um but through physics and um, through microbiology, you know, we know about all of the space in our body and all the, the water and what, what molecules are doing and how they're talking to each other and buzzing around all the time. And I think for a lot of people, especially in Aikido, because we tend to be kind of a nerdy group, that that's really important information, right? To know, actually, it's not, we're not just making this shit up, right? It actually is. And so the, the, the challenge for you as uh, Aikidoka is, how can you get to that, you know, understanding? How, to, how, can, you, how can you embody it, right? So, yeah, that, that's really important, Greg. I think you're right. The knowledge, not just in your imagination. It requires imagination and creativity, but, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in order to develop something, we need to use as mu much of our perceptions as possible. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's interesting that we can kind of make the perceptions into these distinct categories so that, um, let, because when we you, you would teach people to coach, we'd say, look, if you're visual, you're going to tend to give people visualizations, but some people aren't visual. So you also have to give them some, you know, verbal processes um, that they can engage in and um, work with sensation. And um, so when people would say, I, we do be doing this centering thing that they go, well, I can't feel, you know. And so what I do is I just do this with my hand and I do this with my hand. I'd say, feel the sensation of my hand, you know, just give, and then just drop into that. It's like, oh, so, you know, they just, they need a kind of a reference point because they're very visual and very auditory and they've gotten away with that in their life and they haven't developed their sensation. I taught myself to visualize. Helen Palmer used to teach these um, in intuition classes and intuitive. And one of them is rose reading for intuitive information. So you look at a rose, imaginary rose, and you ask it questions and the rose goes through changes and you interpret them. Well, I couldn't even come up with a rose. So what I would do is I have a flower and I'd look at it and I'd close my eyes and I'd try to see it and I couldn't and I'd look at it and over time, I got better at being able to close my eyes and see the flower. So I, I trained myself, just like people who say they can't feel, I say practice this kind of thing. Over time, that's gonna be more accessible to you. And I have no idea how you develop auditory, but how that's, I know that's how you can develop visual and sensate for people who say, like my line was I couldn't visualize. And then I, I can now, it's not my strongest, element, but I can do it. Okay. What are the benefits of extending, of extending, of developing extension? 
And it can be in our lives or on the mat, either one or both. You know I'm biased toward in our lives, but. I think that they are, um, for me, similar. So the on, life, on the mat and in life, one of the benefits um, or a benefit, yeah, is having um, a quality that's greater than yourself. And so there's a kind of support system in a, in a sense there that when you're focused on the individual, the, the I body, it feels, there seems, there's almost a lot of, there's a lot of pressure um, there, like, wow, you have to do a lot. And when in developing extension, let's say in the world, it, it feels like it's a bigger perspective, a broader perspective in a way, and, and you can, I can draw on more support, I, I guess I'd say, that makes it less personal. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that was really good. There's a both on the mat and off the mat being the benefits of that extension is, is so numerous. I think in, in a lot of ways, fundamentally, it, it helps in on the mat, it helps in making the techniques go easier or to use less energy or to use less force when you have that extension. And you, and, and you really see it when somebody's going for their black belt exam and they're, they're sort of not extending key. And then since you sort of keep telling them like, hey, do some two steps, have your arms extended, like really in between moves, being sort of like energetically ready, right? Yes. And you're energetically holding yourself. And it's not a, it's that weird space between it's not relaxed and like collapsed, but it's relaxed with some juice flowing through it. And the same thing with meditation in sitting where I think you had said, um, you, you rouse yourself for meditation. Yes. You're kind of sitting upright, right? And, and, and then I think like in life, it, it's so, it makes it so much easier to sort of navigate all the pain and suffering that's happening on a regular basis that can weigh people down. And I, at least for me, it's been incredibly helpful to have, to be able to walk through time and space and wherever I am and I'm not bored and I'm not depressed and I'm not it's and then no, no matter what happens right like that's just all part of life and that doesn't weigh down and I'm sort of taking responsibility for my responses through being extended absolutely that's beautiful. And that reminds me of this quote that I just got. It's a Stephen Hawking quote. Remember to look up at the stars, not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. And however difficult life may seem, there's always something you can do and succeed at. It matters that you don't just give up. Um, just, you know, that look up at the stars. It's like, put it out there. And then I think, you know, and I think you know, back to the uh, energy arm, it sort of it has, gives us choice. Like we can choose to do that instead of struggle against this. You know, there's the pressure coming to bend our elbow and we can, you know, fight with that or struggle with it, or we can choose to, to reach out. It gives us that choice. And there's nothing wrong with fighting or struggling. I'm not gonna put it down. It's just as a steady diet, um, it's tiring and doesn't really bring satisfaction. Whereas that sense of being able to extend out into the world creates for me more possibilities. That's that sense of 
you know, maybe we could do this or maybe we could do that or um, let's think about things from a more um, panoramic view. But to do that and to do that, I need to be able to really sort of have a panoramic experience rather than go like this, yeah, panoramic view. And it's kind of an idea, but it, it's not an experience of being able to ex extend myself out and then think a more panoramic view of you know, the situation, whether it's Aikido or the war in Ukraine, or can I look at it in a bigger? And I think the ability to extend physically helps my mind, just what you said in the very beginning, the connection between the body and mind. When I can extend physically, my mind extends a little bit. I can have a more panoramic view and I can see more possibilities. Um, so I think it helps that way. And then it's just, you know, it's a fun thing in Aikido to be able to have that ability to experience benevolent power without so much effort. You know, that sort of positive thing that can come through. And I've been on the receiving end of it and it's very, I mean, you've heard me say, I've been thrown so hard that spit flew out of my mouth and snot flew out of my nose and I didn't feel abused at all. I felt enlivened. And I've been thrown a quarter as hard and felt abused. So it's not the amount coming through, it's the quality that, um, that is in that extension, that quality of power. So that's also important that we're connecting ourselves to some, I'm gonna call something benevolent rather than ego-driven. Any other thoughts or extensions and before we do some Boken? Thoughts on extensions, sorry. Questions? I've been thinking about trust because the next month we're doing um, an embodiment lab on trust um, because somebody asked for it. <laughs> it's not a big, um, not a favorite topic of mine because <laughs> I, I, I think it's, there's a lot of weird stuff going on with trust. And um, with regard to extension, there is a, um, there's less of a need for this concept of trust. Uh, for me, which um, has to do with that, that running the energy um, and the bigger perspective, trust seems kind of small in a way, like extend your key, whereas extension and riding that way, key is extended. I don't, it's something else there that's not related. That's all I have to say. I, I want to make one recommendation. Um, I don't use the word trust. Um, I use the word I have confidence in rather than I trust. Yeah. But um, what, what I would recommend is that you be sure that you define it. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't, I mean, people say, you know, I trust this or I trust that. Well, yeah. don't trust me. I don't even trust myself. And it's a heavy burden to lay on me. Someone says, I trust you. It's a burden. I, I, I can screw up for myself, let alone get there for you. And so um, it's just, I, I don't, I think it's, it's a heavy trip to lay on, on someone. And I think it's a lot to ask of ourselves. Now, if you define it, you can define it in such a way that I trust that I'll show up at being authentic. Okay, that's different than I trust you or I trust this or that. Because people and things are not trustworthy from a point of view of, um, Here's the thing, if you say it that way, trust implies I won't hurt you. That's what it implies. If someone says I trust you, it implies I won't hurt them. And that's just almost not possible. We hurt the people we love all the time. We don't mean to, but we do. And, exactly, yeah. And so we are, someone says I trust that, it means that's not gonna hurt me. It's very unlikely, so I think I'm, just cautionary is to define it, make a clear definition about it, because I, I feel so strongly I don't use the word. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think that's partially where I got it from, actually, because years and years ago in one of the uh, embodiment labs, 
or embodiment, you know, experiences we had, you talked about that as well. And um, it's sticky for people. People like the word trust. It's very interesting. <laughs> they want to use it. Because people want to feel safe. Yeah, exactly. But that's, and, but that's preposterous. Yeah. It's, it's completely preposterous. There's no way. We I think it's a construct. Yes. Um, yeah. We're all going to die. We're going to lose everything. How safe is that? Yeah. I mean, that's the only guarantee we have. Well, the cool thing is when we were talking about it today, um, you know, we were, you know, it's obviously not a, a subject we came up with ourselves, right? So there's a challenge in that, which is nice. But, you know, when you step, when you take a step, you have, you, you kind of go into this unknowing. And if you are going to trust something, it requires a whole disconnect or a whole non not knowing I don't know. It's there's a whole contradiction in there, which is kind of fun. But I appreciate what you said. I would just yeah. say, be sure that you give it a definition. Yeah. You know, just say I'm using the word this way. This is how I'm using it, because otherwise people just project. You know, you they'll go, they'll project the way they want to use it, and then yeah. get into a thing with you. But if you're really clear, this is how I'm using the word. Then, yeah. then people don't inadvertently project their own thing onto what you're trying to do. Well, I think the fun thing is, and then I'll, I'll skip off, but, um, and I appreciate, I appreciate the time spent. The fun thing about these, these interactions are that they are a lab. It's truly not us trying to teach something. We're exploring the concept of something. So we get to find out what people think about this word and share that experience and then develop a conversation when we do that embodied exploration, right? So. Um, it's kind of fun that way, a little bit daring. And, and, you know, people have, you know, you're like, oh, that's over there and that's over there. So yeah. It, it is, yeah, it's, it's interesting, but I appreciate the, uh, the input and to clarify, you know, for people like, yeah, this is a sticky word. I it, is. it is. And I just say, so my take on it is this, and then someone else's take yeah. on it is that, and that's whatever. And of course, people yeah. like the word they want to use it because they want to feel safe. Yeah, yeah. They, they want to be in a relationship with a person who would hurt them, which in my experience is not possible. So. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm always suspicious when the person uses that word, especially when they're saying something like, I trust you, Greg. And in my mind, I'm like, you shouldn't. You I know. should talk through what you're wanting because I could easily mess up and fail you here, <laughs> right? And in, in the like partner acrobatics I do, there's a lot of, they, 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 you know, people are in my hands up above my head and, and I'll have a lot of flyers that will come to me and say, I only trust you. And I'm like, no, don't trust me. Let's talk through what we're doing. Let's have confidence that you feel good about my level and my ability and how we're spotting in your abilities, right? Because yeah. this is, you could get hurt and I can't guarantee that you won't get hurt, right? And, uh, and we know I, that try, I try to make all of that really clear, but people's bodies, it's interesting to me how fast somebody can trust you yeah. with their body, like their whole being can trust you. And then others will never like let you get in, even past their lines of defenses, right? Well, it's like the people who in Aikido who say, I trust you won't hit me or hurt me. I'm like, but it's Aikido. I yeah. can easily hurt you or hit you, me. That's, if we don't have that daring edge, we can't really practice. It's dance. Otherwise it's dance, which is cool. And I love dance, I think it's great. But Aikido is a martial art. So it implies we could always hurt or be hurt. And I think that's really important. I think that's you know one of the ways we grow, putting that yeah, stuff out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so um, when we could scrub our bokens because we can do some extension with our bokens and work with our intention at the same time. So let's um, do our ritual and then stir the cosmic soup and invite wisdom traditions from all times, all places, and all eons to come and support our intentions for good in the world and lightning ride the heaven and bringing it into us. Oh. And then let's take a moment and see if we can really 
extend out. And to do that, let's draw from the earth, let's draw from Aiki energy and spirit behind us, from above us, around us, and focus it into a point out through the tip of the bokeh. And then let's say our declaration out loud. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Let's send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut, cut again, and a key eyes. Hey! Okay, let's make it a little stronger, a little brighter, a little more. Focus your extension to a point, draw the energy from above, below, and around, and let's say our intention out loud. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut, and again, and one with a ki eye. Hi! Feel the extension going out, or sense it going out, or see it going out. One last one. Draw a little more, let it get a little stronger. Focus your point, ready, and. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut, and again. Anakiai, hey! Stand in it for a moment. See if you can sense all your atoms vibrating with your intention, going out to the world, flowing through us. Nice, let's put our both hands to the side and bow them out. And let's do a little heaven and earth breathing. And then just before we start, let's take a moment and really um, hold some of our friends over in that area of the conflict in our hearts. So Daria, Olga, Valentina, Sasha, Anastasia, Valentina. And if you have any others, you can say them or think about them. Nice. Now let's dip down, take a breath from the earth. Reach for the heavens and radiate positive ki out into the world. Three more. And now let's just stand in it for a moment. And then as we extend out a sense of appreciation for our community, for our friends and training partners, we have them all over the world, for our teachers and mentors, for Osensei's vision and our own hearts. And let's bow out. Well, thank you both for um, an enlightening discussion. I took some notes and I um, feel like it was a good learning for me. And it's something we could probably 
noodle around with some more in terms of, because it has to do with a bigger presence. And I think a bigger presence, um, when we have that, we're more influential and then we can make a difference. Thank you. Yeah, Thank that you was both. really good. Yeah. Even for a small class. Yeah. Well, thank you, Greg, for keeping this going. And Kimberly, it's so nice to see you after a thank little you. while of not seeing you. So it's lovely to have you there. And you all look like you're in very springiness. We have a little bit of spring here, too. And not as much as you, but it's coming. It's coming. Mm. Yeah.